You thought we'd already shared everything that a pro songwriter knows that you don't? Think again. This episode, we're revealing more stuff that pro songwriters know that amateurs usually don't. All right, Johnny, do your thing. Welcome to the time! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. That, after all, is the secret to success. You don't have to ask anybody's permission to get ahead and get an audience and make money doing what you love to do, but you do have to prove people out there like what you're doing and that it can be, there's commerce involved, that it can make money, that it can be good for other people too. And that's why we called it The Climb, C-L-I-M-B, creating leverage in the music business. See what we did there? It's so clever. <laughs> There's a fine line between clever and stupid. stupid. That's, right. <laughs> That's a Baxter from my good friend and co-host, Mr. Brent Baxter, aka The Word Man. Brent is a hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady A, Joe Nichols, and more. Had a couple number ones last year in Southern Gospel. He's still turning and burning, running and gunning. And what I love about Brent is he helps songwriters like you turn pro by revealing how you write like a pro, do business like a pro, and then on the regular gives you opportunities to access the pros, whether you're kibitzing in on a, on a meeting with the uh, artists, or songwriters and publishers, or whether you're in on the meeting with that <laughs> publisher <laughs> and you're getting to meet them. You can find Brent very easily at songwritingpro.com. Once again, that's songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce, and uh, easy for me to say, and I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinnell. Johnny owns a Daredevil production. They're breaking artists digitally by identifying new fans through data. Listen, if you're an artist looking to increase your streams, blow up your video views, sell more live show tickets, and get discovered by new fans, TV, and music industry pros, then Daredevil production can help. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs just to name a few. You can find Johnny at DaredevilProduction.com. That's production singular, no S, and there is no S because there is no other. Johnny D. How you doing, yep. brother? Man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, uh, you know, stoked to uh, to dive into this one. I think it's going to be helpful. I think it's going to go be, a deeper dive. I think it's going to be thrilling. I think it's going to be <laughs> chills, thrills, spills, and hopefully cure some ills. I don't know. Nice. All right. Well, before we get into to more stuff that the pros know that the amateurs don't, some more behind the scenes, uh, pull back the green curtain on the Wizard of Oz kind of stuff, let's take care of some business here. Yes. Uh, first and foremost, if you have, if you're an indie artist and your song is completed, it's mixed, it's mastered, and you are ready to start putting together the promotional machine, which is going to require a lot of video content. And you'd like to get that song and maybe be featured on our podcast for the video content challenge, where we dream up a billion different ways for you to promote that song with video content. Send your content into info at daredevilproduction.com. Put VCC or video content challenge in the subject line, and we'll reach back out to you. Secondly, shout out to American Songwriter Podcast Network on AmericanSongwriterMagazine.com, AmericanSongwriter.com, sorry. And uh, that's a 36-year-old brand name. We're stoked to be a part of this platform. If you've been a longtime climber, go check out some of these other shows. There's, it's all stuff that is in your wheelhouse. If you found us on that platform for American Songwriter, welcome to the climb. We love to have you. There's good stuff in here. Feel free to binge and ask right. questions. Um, and then join the Climb community. It's it's facebook.com forward slash the Climb community. Easy to find. You mm -hmm. have to ask to be let in. We let everybody in. And this is singers, songwriters, indie artists, indie musicians. It's a it's a thriving community. It grows every single day. No, no kidding. It, everybody's sharing promotion ideas and tour stuff and hooking up with song rights and celebrating their wins in the right places and in shouting out their gigs in the right places. And uh, it, this is a place where you can come be validated, be supported and, and get answers to the things that are of your day-to-day -day artist life, right? That's right. So we like to post uh, new heights on Wednesdays. And so that's the time for you to share your, your wins for the week, your music related wins. I just want to share some from uh, some climbers that I've run across. So uh, Sunday Joe Graham says, I have three different songs being pitched to a few different artists, including Chrissy Metz and Kelly Clarkson. Woo. And yesterday uh, I became a co-coordinator for my NSAI chapter. 
And then suddenly you start to see the fruit of your work. So awesome nice. Sunday, Joe. That's great. So she's getting some out of boys, out of girls there. Uh, let's see here. We'll just do a couple of these. There, there are several of these, which is fun. So uh, Larry Powell, who's also, and he and Sunday Joe are both members of the Songwriting Pro uh, membership too. So that's awesome seeing them having wins. Larry says, I was notified today that my song, Never Doing This Again Morning, made it through another uh, pitch publisher. So it's the seventh time for this to happen for this song. Perseverance is the name of the game. So wow. good job, Larry Powell. And Way let's see here. Yeah. And let's see. Amy Carlock said, uh, I got an email from an artist who wants to cut a song I'd pitched a few months ago. I've gotten a local radio station going to play one of my latest releases. So congratulations, Amy and Sunday Joe and Larry and everybody else. I didn't get to read all your wins for the week. Just too many wins. But good job. Dude. I hate to bring a downer to this, but Dusty Hill just died from who? CZ Top. Bass what? player from ZZ Top. The other beard. Well, that is. Thank you. Rest in peace, Dusty Hill. And thanks for those tunes, man. That was that was a badass little band from Texas. Let me tell you. That was, that's a great <laughs> little band from Texas. So, yeah, rest <laughs> sorry, in peace. Sorry. Dusty. All shot. right. I was just like, no. What? We're like, congratulations. And whoa. <laughs> okay. Oh, guys. Okay. Sorry. I just had to get that out there. Throw that cold bucket on there. Man. Okay. Yeah, so subscribe to the podcast wherever you consume your podcast or follow it. I think some platforms don't let you subscribe, you follow it. And uh, tell a friend about it, guys. If we're helping you and you're spending this much time with us, it's for a reason. You're getting something out of it. And the mm -hmm. best thing you can do is, is convince somebody else that, hey, like this is, this is where it's at. Go and find some good info here. So um, what don't I know? All right, so last, uh, well, two episodes. So in episode 285, uh, we revealed some stuff that the pro knows that maybe you don't. And I'm going to go over all those, uh, partly because it's in episode 285 and partly because I don't have all those notes in front of me. So we're going to start with, uh, we're going to give you five fresh new ones. So we're keeping the list going. None of this is redundant. So listen up. All right. So first of all, the pro knows that it is vital to pitch your own songs. So the pro knows, so I will do a little bit of this refresher. The pro, as I'm calling them, personifying them, is uh, kind of an amalgamation of uh, lessons I've learned along the road from successes and failures. Also from pros that I've hung out with, that I've written songs with, that I've been at the same publishing company with, that I've just followed their stuff. So it's kind of an amalgamation that we call the pro, right? So this is what mm -hmm. the pro knows. So uh, the pro knows it's vital to pitch your own songs. So there are several reasons you need to pitch your own song as a pro. First of all, nobody has as much writing on getting the pro's songs cut as the pro himself or herself, right? The pro knows this. Hey, mm -hmm. nobody's career as, is as important. You know, my career is not as important to anybody else as it is to me. Exactly. That's right. Nobody has as much writing on my career as I do because it's mine. So That's the right. pro also knows that's very difficult to get a cut, like way difficult. So every bit of help counts. It's like all hands on deck. So a uh, story I've told this before, but you know, I pitched crickets to the head of Broken Bow Records myself. My publisher wasn't into it. My co-writers were into it. So, you know, we demoed it up ourselves and did a guitar vocal and and we were working on pitching it and just so happened my my pitch was the one that landed, right? It could it very easily could have been theirs. I just happened to get across the finish line first. And I pitched it to the head of Broken Bow, and he loved it. He got it to Joe Nichols, and Joe recorded it. And I'm glad I didn't just quote unquote let my publisher handle it because that's what they, you know, that's what they're for. That's what they get paid to do, right? Is to pitch my songs. Yeah. No, I'm like, I'm a pro, and this is something I had to grow in. I wasn't as as good at this early on. I, I wasn't as mindful of this. I was not thinking like the pro. I was thinking a little bit more like the the amateur. Going well, my job is to write songs. Their job is to go get them cut. But over time, I figured out, no, my job is to write songs, get them cut. That make money. That make money. That my <laughs> job is to make write songs that make money. Right. So I started yeah. I started pitching my own stuff. And sure enough, I've gotten some cuts out of it. So uh, also, pitching your own songs helps you create relationships. And, you know, their relationships are created and strengthened through pitch meetings. And that's really valuable. They can lead to co-writes with the producer or the artist as well as access in general to the artist network. So the, the pro knows that getting his face and his songs in front of an A&R rep or producer helps create kind of brand awareness 
of him as a writer. So no producer is ever going to say, you know, we really need a Brent Baxter song, you know, to round out this album. If he doesn't have any idea who Brent Baxter is and what kind of songs he writes, no one's going to say, man, we, cause that's one thing that you used to hear some like, we need point. like a Jim Lauderdale song. We need like a Jim Lauderdale kind of thing for this record. Uh-huh. Cause Jim Lauderdale is uh, a mad scientist. He's a, he's a genius. He's awesome. He's, he's quirky. He, he is Jim Lauderdale. No one else is. And so he's had cuts by George Strait and Mark Chestnut, just a bunch of people, Patty Loveless, and but he kind of does his thing. He's got his mm-hmm. own little fingerprint on it. But if people don't know who Jim Lauderdale is, they it's going to take them a lot longer to figure out, we need a Jim Lauderdale song, or we need a Bruce Robinson song, or we need a whoever it might be kind of flavor to round this out. So getting your own stuff out there helps you create that brand where hopefully somebody identifies you and what you do. It can go, well, we need one of those type deals. You know, yeah. to round out this record. They can't do that. They don't know who you are. Um, it's the same reason Papa John's works so hard to put their name and their pizzas through your mind with advertising, right? If you're hungry, they want you to be hungry. F- you know, for Papa John's. They want you to be hungry, <laughs> not just for a pizza, but for a Papa John's pizza, right? That's right? Same thing with Pizza Hut or Domino's, whatever. Likewise, when an artist or producer is hungry for hits, you want them hungry for your hit, not just for yeah. a hit. Like you want them thinking you, like we need to call you know, Sunday, we need to call Bob. We need to call whoever, Brad, you know, Chris and Patrick. We need, we need this kind of hit. Right. So that's super yeah. important. I've, you know, I've had opportunities come from that where, you know, when I did start getting out pitching my own stuff and setting up my own meetings and, um, you know, you'd, you get that thing every once in a while, if they're loving your stuff. Go, oh, we need to get you with so-and-so maybe one of their writers or one of their artists. And right. so, you know, I, you just you get in those at bats. And I remember um, there's a, a baby artist on, I think it was on Sony. And I was, you know, starting to get meetings over at Sony with an A&R rep over there. And he's digging my stuff enough to let me keep coming back, you know. And and then I saw him out one time at a, at a music, you know, business event or whatever. It's this industry kind of shindig. And he's got a he's got that baby artist with him. I'm like, hey, how's it going? So and so. And we're chatting. He's like, hey, you should meet this person. Hey, this is Brent Baxter. He's a writer. He's had Monday morning church, blah, blah, blah. Y'all should write together. You're darn right we should. And we did yeah. some. Now, his record never came out, but it's not my fault. Uh, but, you know, it creates sure. opportunity. It's an at bat. You know, we talk about reach and frequency. Yep. You know, so much. You got to reach them and then it's that frequency of pitching. So the pro knows you need to pitch your own dang songs. Can't just wait on other people to do it for you. So that's one of them. And, 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 like, you know, to your point, it's you just if you're constantly in their face you know for one reason or another i mean mm-hmm. not like in an annoying way but mm-hmm. you know they're you, you run into them where they're at right like yeah and and when they're out or they're over here or you're going in and making that appointment and meeting with them and and they're slowly but surely they're just starting to recognize your face more and they're starting mm-hmm. to recognize your energy more. And then uh, it, it just, you move from the unfamiliar to the familiar. Exactly. I, I have a question. It's for kind of like, how do you get to seven? You know, the same yeah. thing we would ask with the video content challenge. How do you do that? It really is. It totally really is. Right. Mm-hmm. So how did you, like, I'm Joe Blow from Kokomo. Let's just assume that I have a really great competitive song. I've, mm-hmm. I've got a great song, a great recording. How do I get my meeting with Benny Brown? Yeah, broken buff. That's a whole different uh, series of podcasts. And so, but but that's a good thing to address because some of y'all listening right now may be frustrated going, well, th- yeah, that's great, Brent, but I, I live in Kokomo, Indiana or whatever. Yeah. How do I get there? And it is a long process. And you may be able to only start out going, well, I'm going to pitch to local artists or regional artists that I can get to because mm-hmm. I can't get to Brad Paisley and I can't get to Luke Bryan or Carrie Underwood or you know, Benny, Benny Brown over Broken Bow, whoever. So you need to start where you can start developing those muscles, start figuring out what works and what gets results, that sort of thing. And there are other ways. So, I mean, that's and a one PR, thing. We, PRO is a good place to start. PRO is a, is a way to start people. networking and to start meeting people. I mean, you don't pitch to a PRO, but you know, it's right. a way to start networking and, and hopefully eventually you get to some people you can pitch to. I mean, that's one thing we try to do with songwriting pro um, is you know, that's one of our things is write like a pro, do business like a pro and connect to the pros. And so, you know, on, on a regular basis, we have opportunity for you to get in front of a publisher or to get in front of a producer, have as 
event that looks like we're just getting locked down uh, that will be getting you in front of an artist that is working on a record and you get a chance to get you your song in your face in front of them uh, to hopefully get a cut. So there are some, um, some opportunities through the songwriting pro community. Um, And so they're hard to come by because they're drinking from a water, you know, a fire hydrant and, you also got riders lined up across the block just to, with a glass of water for them. And like, I can't have any more water. Right. Yeah. So, Who have proven really awesome water. Exactly. Really <laughs> that good. makes money. Really good <laughs> Perrier's or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so this is more about that. If you're in a position and you haven't been taking advantage of some of the um, opportunities you have to pitch, you need to start taking advantage of that. If you aren't in that position yet, then well, guess what? You have all those opportunities in front of you. So you're not going to let a single one of them pass you by. You're going to have that mindset from the beginning, which I wish I did, which mm. I wish I did. There's so many more pitch meetings and relationships I could have made pitching my own songs that I missed out on because I was just focused on writing songs, which is great and awesome. It makes the whole machine work. But man, you got to do the other stuff too. So I realize it may be frustrating right now. Just remember that that's a part of the thing you're going to need to do and look for those awesome. opportunities to create those. So, yeah, but good question. Yeah. All right. Next one. The pro knows you can't settle for average. The pro realizes that there's a lot of mediocre music on the radio and records and even more of it getting played at writers nights like all over Nashville. But the pro doesn't let himself start grading his own songs on a curve. Don't grade on a curve. The pro grades himself not only against the very best in the world, but against the very best that you know he or she can do, him or herself. The pro also knows that unless he's you know riding with the artist, he's fighting for the one or two you know of a, just a couple slots on an album, and he's competing against the best in the world. So even if he is riding with the artist, he knows he is still competing against the best songwriters in the world, at least the ones that are riding with the artist. The pro knows he better bring his best. You better bring best, right? So, yep. um, you know, I've been guilty of this before. Uh, there have been too many times where I almost coasted with writing with a young artist, you know, as if they weren't really trying to write really good songs with other really good writers and co-writes, right? Almost like, oh, I'm writing with the artist. You know, there, there kind of came a point where, and this was years ago, where it got to be like, oh, you got to write with the artist, got to write with the artist, write with, you know, write with a baby artist if you can, because, you know, I couldn't get to whoever at the time. So write with baby artists, you know, hoping they get the deal or whatever and writing with them and in a way, just thinking, okay, that's the magic button. I'm right with the artist. Great. I do good work. So, you know, this should happen. Not really respecting the competition as much as I should going, uh, they're writing with really good writers on the days they're not writing with me. And those really good writers are trying to write something that gets on their record too. It's not just yeah. me that they're writing with. It's not mm. just me. You know, it's yeah. it's a different thing. Like this is still super, super competitive. So it's really competitive to try and write a song that just comes out of nowhere and gets cut. You know, it isn't an inside the camp song, but it's still super competitive to try and get one in the camp because everybody's fighting like that third monkey trying to get on Noah's Ark, right? <laughs> I should I should have a publishing company, Third Monkey Music. Yeah. Um, cause that's a reminder of how everybody's fighting and you got to fight like that third monkey too, which means do your homework, show up prepared, show up, be professional, do your best to be a good hang. And then also to write the very best song for that artist that you can. Uh, and, I think, I, yeah, you know what? I, I got something to say about that. I think, um, I think it's in order to get into this business as an artist or as a writer, the first step is you really just got to be blown away by music, right? Oh yeah. You just got to be, it. you got to love music so much that you're like, I want to make this. And you got to be mm-hmm. just so unbelievably fascinated with it. That like, like that the way I was, you know, um, it, 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 everything turns you on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like literally b- back when, when I was a teenager and I could still smell the, the, the fumes, <laughs> I, this, I'm not even well, kidding. Let's, about let's this, clarify that's due to sinus problems. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've had, yeah, multiple, Medical. yeah, yeah. Guys, okay. I've had horrible sinuses my whole life. Yeah. There's no, no other reason than that, but I, it's <laughs> okay. just, uh, 
but it is real and it is not good, you know, that I yeah. can't smell. But, but I, what I could smell, man, like the fumes from the damn tour bus used to just, we're at a show right now, you know? Yes. Like, you know, just fire me up, bro. That's great. And, yeah. and I want to say one other thing too, like, because we're coming from this position of a fan first, right? Mm -hmm. We tend to subconsciously compartmentalize ourselves away from our idols, mm -hmm. right? And what you're saying right here is, man, that can be your idol and you can worship that. And that's cool, you know, like as a music artist mm -hmm. and stuff, but it's also your competition. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. where the bar is at. And that's what you're competing with. And so it's weird. So, so in a lot of ways, like subconsciously, I think like writers and artists, they, they're trying to compete with what they consider to be their class. When the reality is if the goal is to get cuts and get on the radio, your class is, you know, Carrie Underwood, Keith Urban, Tim McGraw, yeah. like these, Ashley these, the people Gorley, writing those songs, these are the cats that, yeah, these are the or artists McKenna. that you need to cut them. And the people that write those songs for them, that's your competition. Yeah. And I remember it just brings me back to that story when with when we first got our first regional booking deal, I knew we were kind of in a bubble. You know, I knew we were really good. Mm -hmm. I knew that we had some we were doing stuff different. And we got this amazing opportunity to uh, sign with this regional booking agency that, that would eventually put us out on tour for like a year straight. And we became super pro and all that stuff. But the first thing I asked was, who's the best band you got? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that, like, gritting my teeth, like, ah, this is going to probably suck. But, but you know. <laughs> and I got to go see that band and got my ass handed to me on a silver platter. Yeah. They were so much better than we were. Mm -hmm. And it, it took my breath away. I had to, I had to regroup, right? Yeah. I had to yeah. be like, okay. And then decide, like. Okay, you just got schooled. This is where the bar is. I thought it was different. I thought, you know, I was pretty proud of myself right up until that night. Yeah. And then I became like more motivated. So I think it's a good thing that that you're that you're looking at all this as your true and real competition with the Shane McAnally's and the Ashley Gorley's and the Ross Copeland's and because that's man, you better be writing like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 get that breath going. And if you shoot for that. But, but because I mean, by the way, after that, we we remarkably got better because all of a sudden I knew this is a different standard, mm -hmm. and I, and I knew how to I knew how to do it, you know, like I yeah. saw it and I instantly got it, but I wouldn't have known that I had to do it unless I saw it, you know. Man, I now think it's too like, many okay. of us carry the bar around on our shoulders, yeah. you know, <laughs> like it just yeah. I'm just hiking around with it, you know, leaning on my shoulder, and it's it's not there. It's not, that's yeah. a chip on your shoulder. That's not the bar. You that's know, right. the bar is, is above you. Go, you got to jump up and get that sucker. It's like that $20 bill on the wall that we've talked about before. You know, yeah. you think you can jump so high and then somebody puts a $20 bill six inches above where your hand went. And then all of a sudden you can jump six inches higher because you have a, yep. a goal you're trying to hit. So that's the thing, man. You can't settle for average. I, you know, and it's hard to tell what average is. Again, we carry our bars on our shoulders. A lot of times, and that's where getting that feedback and getting your butt whooped uh, can help um, and and kind of show you where the bar is. That's where getting coached or going to see greatness uh, can help. But yeah, you can't just just because you're writing a song. Nobody's owes it to you to cut your song. Nobody owes you that. You're not entitled to any of that. You got to go out and you got to earn it. And so if yeah. you settle for average, you're not even going to have an average songwriting career. You're going to have and, no and not for nothing. Career. I in the professional world of the music industry, whether it's rec sound recordings or songwriting, um, the art is absolutely freaking objective mm -hmm. until it's competitive. <laughs> then it <laughs> right. becomes subjective, but not until it's competitive. Mm -hmm. So, um, you In know, in other words, I can tell this is not, this is not good until yeah. it gets really competitive. And then it comes down to all these other factors like, Oh, does this fit the artist's lane? Does this fit where they are in their personal life, in their career? Does it just just feel more like them than the other song? All this stuff that you can't really control and maybe don't know if you're not writing with the artist. Right. So, so, so circling back to what I said before, if you put my band up against that 
that mannequin band that I saw that was like the best band on the agency and we played side by side, you would absolutely be the dumb consumer who saw the band for the first time. And you would say, those guys are better than those guys. Mm -hmm. You maybe you couldn't articulate why. Right. Exactly. You couldn't like break it down professionally and know all the nuance, but you'd be like, no, they're better. That's objective. Yeah. That's objective. <laughs> and then, then it becomes, you get good enough, then it can, becomes the Beatles, Rolling Stones. Yeah. It's not who's better. That's it's right. like, who's your favorite, really? Because better, I mean, that doesn't even apply, right? Just who's it, who's it, your cup of tea? Who's your shot of whiskey? Yeah, now it's, now, then it gets subjective after it's competitive. Yeah. But, are you Beatles you know, people or are you Rolling Stones people? You're both yeah. right. So you guys, like, you know, I don't know why everybody, why, why, why if if i'm a, if i'm a songwriter i would be uh, every quarter i'd be on your thing man on your paper mm -hmm. publisher just to hear what the songs are that got in the top 10 mm -hmm. what that guy's saying about those songs maybe i'm getting a hot take on that song like this song is unbelievably killer and then all of a sudden this guy comes out and the publisher's like man that is a hit song in 1994 <laughs> right you're like, Ooh. and you're like dope yeah <laughs> I, I didn't see that coming you know like wow so you're staying on top of that trend you're staying mm -hmm. on top of the uh, of the bar and you know you keep knowing where that first down line is it's like that yellow line in the nfl that tells yeah. you where that first down line is you know so that's all i had to say it's funny that. how that first down mark is always ahead of you it's never behind you yeah funny Sounds how that good. works anyway <laughs> all right that's, so I'm stealing that <laughs> all right so the pro knows it's it's super important to pitch your own songs the pro knows you cannot settle for average and the pro knows you better be wise with your money Okay, so listen, the music the music business is a financial roller coaster if you're lucky. Okay, so the hot the lows are guaranteed, right? The huh? highs are not guaranteed. That's why you're you're blessed if it's a roller coaster, because that means you had a high. Okay. Otherwise yep. it's just a low skim across the bottom. So you're blessed. Otherwise it's you driving up. across Illinois. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> driving across Kansas. Um so you're blessed if you get up high enough to have a steep drop. But if you get up high enough, you're probably going to have a steep drop. So otherwise, it's just like low road all the way uh, from here to Colorado, right? And it is for most riders. It's that. So, however, in the situa in either situation, whether it's low road all the way or roller coaster, um, it's important to watch your money closely. The more toys you put on a credit card, the more cuts you have to get to pay for them. Or the more day job you got to work, the more hours at your day job you got to work to pay for those toys. The bigger the, and the car less payment. the time you're riding. Exactly. The bigger the car payment, the less money you're putting back for a rainy day or to put back so you can quit your job and go chase your dream full time. And even if it hit happens, the pro knows this might be your, this might be your only one. So he didn't blow it. He didn't buy the, you know, the hit house, the hit truck, the yeah. hit pool, you know, that sort of thing. The pro doesn't let himself and get such bad shape financially that he has to sign over his share of a particular song's copyright to his co-writer's publisher just to cover a $300 demo bill, right? Yeah. Sometimes that happens. You can't cover that, that part of the, you know, 300, your $300 demo bill. All right, well, you can just sign over, you know, your pub. That makes me want to vomit. For you. Uh, do you want to be in that horrible. position over $300? It's not a big deal if the song never gets cut. If the song goes number one, it is a big deal with zeros on the end of it. Mm. Do you want to be that, like, maybe I shouldn't have, I don't know what's, you know, I shouldn't have bought that the top of the line gaming system last week because now this bill came in for this demo. I can't pay for it. And I think I'll just sign over my pub because I don't want to shout out to 300 bucks right now. But I bought that new guitar. That could end up being a $100,000 guitar, <laughs> you know, yeah. if that song gets cut. So you have to, you know, heck, we did a whole episode, right? On don't, maybe you shouldn't buy that guitar. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, that could be a hundred and fifty thousand dollar guitar. Exactly. Why? Because I bought that or, instead or of paying for the system. demo and sign across my damn yeah. sign over my publishing, so that we could get a cut, and then it got cut and made all this money, and that would have been my share had I not bought that effing car. Exactly. <laughs> Sam yep. Walton, who started Walmart, mm -hmm. Sam Walton was a billionaire. Still drove this rusted out piece of crap oh, yeah. like nineteen fifties pickup truck, and would go pick up personally pick up his executive business guests who would come in from this brand or that brand, they, yeah. they would fly into Arkansas. He would always pick them up personally. He wouldn't staff it out or send a, a limo or anything like that. And they would walk out and like, what the hell? Yeah, sure. You stuff in the back there. We'll take a ride. Yeah. And, uh, 
And they're like, I mean, number one, they're super impressed that he showed up. But number two, that like the, the value of that truck was like maybe 600 bucks or something. Yeah. You know? I mean, but he didn't care. He didn't they have got to it from care. point A to point B. Yeah. Exactly. You know? That wasn't what was important to him. Yeah. So, that's the TV telling you that you need a new car. <laughs> ex- that is totally the TV telling you you need a new car. And, you know, TV didn't even, they, they're not on your team. TV yeah. is on team TV. They aren't, they aren't on team climber. Okay. They're not on your team. That's right. So that is for darn sure. Um, so yeah, man, I mean, I remember when, when Monday morning church hit, I'm like, wow, this is kind of unrelated to the rest of my life. You know, this first big cut of any magnitude and oh my gosh, it, no, now it's in the top five. Okay. And so when those checks start coming in, uh, you know, one thing I moved out of Matt Klein's house, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, got my own house, but did I get like a big fancy house that I would need a Monday morning church every year or two to support? No, I got a cheap little house in Antioch. So, mm-hmm. and it turned out it was a bad neighborhood and we ended up moving after I found my wife and we got together and we're like, yeah, we moving. Uh, cause we got tired of waking up to gunshots, but you know, I just was looking for a, I wasn't looking for an impressive house. I was looking for, I got a nice truck, which I paid off, but yeah. I got, you know, I just like, let me just get a house that I can put my stuff in. I don't have a lot of stuff anyway. And mainly I want to be on the road, Lord willing. I'm going to be on Music Row every day. And that's where yeah. I'm going to be. And, you know, the mortgage on that sucker was like 400 bucks or something ridiculous. You know, it's like, good. This can ride out the, the low times that are going to come. And so the yeah. pro doesn't let himself, uh, again, get, get in such bad shape that he signed off his publishing or he's, you know, having to work those extra hours. You have to build it for the long haul. That's what it comes yeah. down to. You got to build this thing for a marathon. Um, and you want some stuff to ride out the, the ups and the downs. For some people that might be, hey, I keep a side gig, right? I keep a gig waiting tables. There's uh, Michael Delaney, who's a hit songwriter. Uh, I met him over my major Bob days. He was right with Neil Thrasher and they were getting cuts and hits together. He still mm. waited tables. At mm. that time, did he have to financially? I'm sure he did not. He understood cash flow. He understood cash flow. He's probably living largely off <laughs> the waiting tables gig and probably stocking the rest of it back. And Banking Lord knows it. he may be yeah. on a beach somewhere today. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but you know, what's that look like for you? How do you build this thing to be sustainable? How do you get out of the debt trap? Because debt really is a trap, man. Bible says uh, the borrower is slave to the lender. So who are you right. giving over your power to? So one of my buddies, Billy Sheehan, man, like world famous freaking bass player, mm-hmm. right? Like he was in, uh, he's in the band called Talos. And then he was, he played with Steve Vai and David Lee Roth's solo band, when, like right when he came out with uh, Eat Him and Smile. All right. That's Billy Sheehan all over that record, which is by, by the way, one of the best records ever made. Like you, whether you like or dislike David Lee Roth, if you're a musician, go listen to those tracks because the crap they did was is mind blowing on there. Yeah. This is not corporate C rock. This is like serious stuff. Like it's yeah. so good. And then he started Mr. Big and he he got all these things. And he's in, been endorsed by Yamaha for 25 years. You know, <laughs> yeah. this dude just just wakes up, he pisses excellence, and he lives in the, he lived like right down the street from me in LA in this little condo that was paid for like 10 years ago. Yeah. And <laughs> And he's like, I'm gone all the time. You know, he's got this beautiful wife, Elizabeth, who's Italian. And this, and, and dude, they just, he's like, every time he's like, I'm like, I was the run, dude. Oh, it was killer, dude. All that money. Yeah, banked it. <laughs> Genius. Genius. Yeah. Genius, dude. Like he just, and, and same thing, I think with um, Zach, Zach Wilde. Zach Wilde mm-hmm. has like, a, like, like 15 years ago, little super famous, super multimillionaire from Ozzy Osbourne, being Ozzy Osbourne's guitar player. Mm-hmm. So him and his wife just, you know, they have this modest house in suburban America and they make boatloads of money, man. They may, they're living the dream, yeah. but they don't spend it. I mean, you know, it's that they're, they're, they're secure. Cause what that is, that's, that's ego, that's insecurity, that's pride, right? Yeah. A lot yeah. of times that leads us to, to think we, or just going with the flow of the American dream says, I got to have this and I got to have that and I got to have that. Okay. And I'm just sheeple going across buying yeah. what other people have. Cause I feel like I need that. No, you really don't. I mean, are you trading <laughs> all that for your dreams? You know I mean? That's, yeah. we try to keep our overhead low 
uh, with our family, one, because hello, music business, you better keep it low or you won't have that head over that roof over your head anymore. Right. So there's that, but also because we have other priorities. We, you know, it, it costs a lot of money to adopt, you know, so there are times we really cut things skinny so we can do other things that we want to do. So it's not even just about the music careers. Like, what else do you want to do? What's the best use of that money? So, yeah. Man, if you need to get on a budget, you know, some people hate Dave Ramsey, but you may want to check out Dave Ramsey to get out of debt. There are other things, systems too, that you can use. And I would definitely suggest to get financially literate because I mean, man, that's a, they don't teach you diddly about that in high school, college, really about how to make a living and keep living and earning, but keep your overhead low. You don't need the whip just because you saw it on a cool video. You don't need it. Save that money, put that money toward your career and long term you'll be a lot happier. That's so. right. That's right. Stay away from the have sisters. The Kids. three have sisters. Anita, Awana, and I gotta have. Exactly. <laughs> yes. I mean, hey, as much fun as it is to buy like a hit truck, it sucks to have to sell it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, fair enough, man. Uh, that may Oof. even yeah. hurt worse than the joy of getting to buy it. So all right. That's our financial talk for the for the day. All right, next up. There you go. The pro knows you have to build your team carefully. So songwriting is a team sport. No songwriter succeeds on his own, unless he's that rare singer, songwriter, publisher, label owner who runs 100 radio stations, right? I don't know of any of those. So it's (laughs) going to take effort by several people to sustain success. The writer, you know, doesn't pick all those uh, people, but he does have a say in some of those people. Like he doesn't pick all the people like label execs, radio station execs, you know, all that kind of stuff, playlist, you know, curators, all that stuff. But he does have a say in some of the the team. So co-writers are hugely important. So the right co-writer can be a huge asset by being a talented writer, a great song plugger, and a networking powerhouse. Or the co-writer could be a lazy writer who's so toxic that nobody wants anything to do with him including his songs like, Oh yeah, we're going to cut that. Then I looked at the writers and saw Joe toxic on the writers thing. And I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I want nothing to do with that. That mm. really could make the difference between a cut or not. If somebody is known mm-hmm. to be toxic, they're like, no, we just cut this other song. That's just really just as good too. But these people aren't crazy. All right. Yeah. I don't have to deal with it later on. I don't have to deal with yeah. it later on. Don't have to see him. Don't have to be in my world. Don't have to worry about number one party or him calling the label and compl- no, just don't have to worry about it. Right. Don't worry about him coming up to me, you know, at an after party or something going, when are you going to sing on my song? What'd you do with that bass? What was that? That was crappy bass line. What? You know, I don't have to deal with it. I got to play bass better than that. Exactly. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so publishers are very important too. All right. So core writers are hugely important. Publishers are really important too. Does the pro go with the first publisher that offers decent money? Or does a pro hold out for the best mix of draw, song plugging, and support, right? Does the yeah. pro, you know, it's kind of like, you know, with a financial thing. Hey, am I going to sign with this person just so I can say I signed a publishing deal? But they've yeah. never gotten a cut. They don't know anybody. But I can say I signed a publishing deal. I'm professional. <laughs> well, do they have anything going on? No, and they won't answer my calls. They're so busy pitching songs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Or do you hold out and hang on to your publishing and for the for the right publisher or, hey, maybe you hang out and just hire an admin company if you have something to administer and just keep your own publishing, whatever. These can be tough decisions with no clear answer. But the pro knows that you got to be patient and discerning. So you got co-writers, you got publishers, you know, each person on your team, each co-writer, each song plugger, et cetera is like an individual stock in your portfolio. So each is an investment in terms of your time, your creativity, your energy, and your and opportunity. So you want to invest in a, you know, if you invest in a bunch of bum stocks, you're going to go broke. If you invest in the right yep. stocks and the value of, your, you know, then maybe the value of your portfolio goes through the roof. That's what we hope. And so you want to, you want to build your team carefully. How do they conduct themselves? Are they being professional? You know, it's that, I think of that old Jim Rohn quote that you are the average of the five people you hang out with the most. Yep. So are, do you have friends that you can rise with or do you have friends you got to rise above? Yeah. Or you're being pulled down too. Exactly. Exactly. The crabs in the bucket, right? It's not a Sarah Evans song. It's the thing about you put a bunch of crabs in the bucket. You don't have to put a top on it. Why? Because if one tries to climb out, the others grab it and pull it back in. Yeah. So, 
definitely be thoughtful about who is on your team. I don't have time for negativity, for people that are complaining and whining and find reasons why they can't do something. I don't have time for that. I'm like awash in a sea of negativity. I don't need you. I don't need to hang on to an anchor. Mm -hmm. So you go be negative over there. (laughs) I'll go be positive with the positive people. We're going to get some stuff done. And then you can blame. Then you can be mad at me for leaving you behind or something or going big time. And You know, fine. We'll (laughs) we'll leave big time to me. Exactly. No, you were small time in me. Yeah, that's what was going on. That's right. Man, he's small time in me. I got to get out of here. (sighs) I love that. Don't small time me. Yeah, that's a T-shirt, bro. It's a freaking T-shirt. Don't small time me. Don't small time me, man. Go big or go home. So true. You need those people. All right, here we go. Here's the last one. Uh, the pro knows. Wow, the industry really does want positive, up-tempo love songs. Shocker. Mm-hmm. So the pro mm-hmm. knows that to maintain success over the long haul. You know, he has to consistently provide artists, labels, radio, or streaming, or whatever with what they want, which is usually positive, up-tempo love. It's really as simple as that. The pro looks at industry tip sheets and sees that pretty much every artist in there is either looking for positive, up-tempo, or hits. And of course, most hits are up-tempo positive. So the pro doesn't spend all his time trying to push songs that the industry and listener aren't looking for. The pro knows he has to balance his or her uniqueness as an individual and creative with the needs and the wants of the mass market. It's kind of fun where they intersect with the market. And the pro is not afraid to be outside the box, but the pro does respect and understand the box. Um, mm-hmm. So, and the same thing as a writer. You have to know what rules yeah. you're breaking. Exactly. It's like, if like you're going to break them. You need to learn the trade before you learn the tricks of the trade. Yep. You got to learn the cuts before you get learn the shortcuts. You know, you got to learn the rules before you know how to break them in a way that doesn't break the whole song or the business. Yep. Too many people try to be rule breakers, but they don't understand the rules and why the rules are the rules. Yeah. You know, they don't understand why the box is there and what the box actually is. They just go, I'm thinking outside the box. You're that's the difference between being ignorant and uneducated yeah. or uh being a student of the game. Exactly. There is a difference. And the pro and the pros know the difference. Yeah. Or at least have a sense of it. I mean, nobody gets it right all the time, but you you know, you at least you have a better understanding and you're you're taking educated yeah. shots outside the box, not just yeah. random, you know, stuff. So again, we're trying not to carry the bar across our shoulders. So yeah, uh, the writer must bring something unique that gives the artist team a reason to pick their songs. But the pro remembers that his songs are written for an audience of millions, not just for an audience of himself. And the artist knows that he doesn't always have to write up to a whole positive, but he knows that's where the most of the money is. So, I mean, it's, I remember hearing a speaker take from uh, Gary Burr years ago. Um, So Gary Burr is like a hall of fame songwriter, tons of country hits and just too many to list. But anyway, so I used to, you know, get these speaker tapes from NSAI and I'd listen to these people like Gary Burr talking and, and he was giving talk and he's like, he used to do these just, you know, big old ballads and people are dying left and right in his songs or whatever, you know, all this heartfelt stuff. And then he you know, wrote this, you know, dumb, fun song. And it's like a big old hit. Huh. And he writes a bunch of more ballads and he writes this other fun song. It becomes a hit. <laughs> and he goes in pretty soon. I'm not the smartest guy, but pretty soon I figure out like happy love song, new car, happy love song, new car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I got to write ballads all the time. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, well, bit. that's kind of nice having a happy song and a new car, you know, or whatever. So he, that is funny. He said like, but you know, so I was mainly writing up tempo and happy and stuff. And he goes, but every once in a while, I'll just have to let the other stuff out and how level complete blocks <laughs> with my song, <laughs> you know, I'll just be so, <laughs> so sad, so melancholy or so depressed or whatever, just level blocks. And that's no, fine. Then funny. I'll go back to writing happy songs and make a good living. And so it's like, yeah, dude, you can do both, but just realize that most of the money is hidden under this rock called up tempo positive. And if you want mm-hmm. to be a pro, a pro means you get paid to do it, right? It's hard to call someone a pro if they never get paid for it. So that if that's what you want, you got to realize the reality of the world as it is, not the world as you wish it were, but go, okay, what are they actually cutting? Oh, they're actually cutting this kind of stuff. Okay. Well, I should probably pay attention to that. And not just be. And again, coming from a mindset of service, 
Exactly. If you're really coming from a mindset of I, I, what do you need? I will give you what you need. Mm -hmm. I will make it right here, right now. I'm going to write what you need. What do you need? And go and listen to the radio. That's what they need. Yeah. So don't just, why would you argue with that? I know exactly. It's, uh, you know, we're, we make our own product and then we try to find, you know, a market for it. Why don't we just listen to what they're telling us? They're holding up help wanted signs. You <laughs> yeah. know, here's, could we please have another up tempo love song, please? Here's my awesome. bad Here's a check. It is so good. <laughs> Didn't you just read no. the sign? We, did you not listen to the radio on the way over here? Here's my five minute ballad. It's so good. <laughs> It's a one minute epic intro before you get to the lyric. Exactly. <laughs> one minute slow intro, slow picking intro. <laughs> slow build. Yeah. Slow build, slow burn <laughs> to your career. Um, so that's what we got to do. So again, just to kind of recap, the pro knows it's really important to pitch your own songs. That uh, What else we got here? You cannot settle for average. Okay, so actually a couple of stories I've been telling this lately is I... I a couple of weeks ago, I had a bunch of rights and I probably just wore my co-writers out. And I'm, and I'm not sure some of them are talking to me anymore. But um, one with a, a buddy of mine, I just actually just sent you the song earlier today. Yeah. I was right with a guy. Killer. And, uh, you know, him and his producers, an indie artist and his producer. And, and so I show up. So they already got a thing going. But it's like, here's a track and here's, you know, I'm working on this melody and here's this title, blah, blah, blah. I was like, ah, it's all, okay, it's all right. What are you thinking about the angle on this? You know, they said, I was like, oh, I've kind of heard, it doesn't really stand out for me. It's like, I've heard a lot of that kind of stuff. Can we just kind of dig? And after a while, he was like, you song title challenging this? Yes, I am. And <laughs> yes, I am. And we just kept digging for trying to, and it was really me just probably pestering them going, oh, yeah, that'll work. It'd be fine. You could probably cut it, but eh. Tim McGraw is not going yeah. to, you know, and just yeah. being just trying to, you know, not settle for average until finally something hit me. I was like, oh, there's a song that I started with one of my uh, coaching clients years ago. And this feels like it could be that, like it kind of going that direction. Let me get a hold of him and see if like, you know, bring him in, bring this idea. And we all share in the song. And so I reached out to the guy, found his number, whatever. Said, hey, we're working on this thing. We think this title would be great for this. They're all about it. I'm right with an artist and the producer. Is that cool? He's like, yeah, man. Because it was his title he brought in to a coach ride with me. Mm -hmm. And so we just whipped it into shape. And now the artist is loving it. The producer is loving it. He's like, I'm definitely cutting this on my EP. I'm loving it. You're loving Dude, it. I, 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 I pitched was like, it last night because yeah. I just got the, the final mix in last night. I pitched it to a guy to label and... He said things I can't uh, repeat on the podcast because he loved it so much. And so we're nice. pitching it. And so either Whisper them to me. I'll say talks. them. I'll say them on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would. Um, no, but that's that's one of my artists that you did it with. Yeah. And so well, thanks for the hook it's up. funny. You, yeah, you sent me the uh, the version of it. And then like literally 10 minutes later, he sends it to me. Oh, yeah. Dude, what do you think? <laughs> That's awesome. I just Brent just sent this to me. This is badass, dude. Like, this is great. This is really good. But it was a lot of work on the front end to not yeah. settle. And uh, by yeah. the way, the the writer, the coaching client who said we could we could hop on that, yeah, he loves it too. So everyone's happy. But it was it was uncomfortable. Like I don't know these guys very well. It's the first time I uh, written with either one of them. And just to be the guy that's going, ah, we can do better. We can do better. Let's let's keep let's just keep looking. Let's you know. And you got a track that already sounds cool, and you got a good singer, so everything's gonna sound good. And you're like, it'd be so easy just to go, oh yeah, let's go with that because it sounds good, and I don't want to be a jerk. But just yeah. holding out, like let's try to make it as good as we can, you know? Because it's like I drove all the way out here to West Nashville, you know? Yeah, yeah. But since we're bother showing up. Let's at least put an extra 30 minutes on the front end to try and find the best idea. And we did. And they were like, oh, we love that idea. Oh, okay, thank you. And then we worked our butts off to try to make it as good as we can. And, you know, who knows what will happen with it. But we're a lot. And I know personally I'm a lot happier than I would have been. If well, we just, I, I'll like, tell you in. what. Like the artist is like super pro singer, uh, consummate pro, like great guy. Yeah, it sounds killer really good voice. on track. But you know what? there is a difference. He could sing the fire out of anything. He could sing the fire out of phone book. 
Okay. Yeah. He could do it and make you believe it and make you cry. But there's something magical that happens when a, a, an artist like that sings like a killer lyric and a killer yeah. melody. It just, it just, it's just different than putting a, an amazing, super pro, awesome vocal on a mediocre song. Yeah. You know, that, it just, it, it, that's stellar. That's going to get a cut. Oh, yeah. Well, at least by him, if nothing else. So maybe y'all can do a video yeah. or seven on it. Um, that's right. There so, you, <laughs> you know, and then I had another thing like that. The the very next week is just digging in, digging in with another, you know, indie artist and another writer buddy of mine and just me kept, I kept going back going, that's good. Can we, can we do something else to like structure it a little differently or put some ear candy at the beginning of it or do this other thing or whatever and just wearing them out and feeling kind of bad. But at the end of it, like everyone's super fired up about it. Yeah. And it's not because I wrote all of it or anything. It's not that, but just sometimes there's value in just going, can we beat this? What, what yeah. else can we do? And I mean, I'm can we that beat comes this? That's my or whatever. It's favorite just, line. Yeah, can we beat this? Yeah, it's fine. It's good. Okay, play house money. Mm-hmm. Let's. We can always come back to this if we can't beat it. Yeah. Let's just see if we can beat it. And so many times, I mean, sometimes you just, you know, it's just not. You just hit a wall and you're like, oh, I just want to go home. Other times, like, I'm so glad we put in the extra work because it's so much better now. Now it's something yeah. I can pitch. Now it's something that you know. If we don't get it cut by Tim McGraw, then you know, that artist is definitely going to cut it either way, probably, you know, and great. Yeah. There we go. It's better. And it's more than just, Oh, here's this indie cut on this artist that hopefully Johnny will blow up into a huge artist. But you know, now it's like, it's so many more doors open because we stuck around, we did the work and we'll see what happens. Yeah. But yeah. So don't settle for average. Um, be wise with your money. And the pro knows they really actually do want positive up tempo love songs. It's, it's, it's a reality, not a cliche. That's yeah. not a cliche. All right. So this has been long, but Hey, in conclusion, I just want to let you know, um, if you want to pick the brain of uh, inside the brain of other pros, I have a great, uh, a gift for you. It's over five hours of, uh, video interviews and content from the songwriting pro archives. Uh, these are usually just for, uh, subscriber members to songwriting pro, but, uh, we've just taken just a little sliver of all the goodies in the, uh, in the site, in the member area and made them where you can have access to it. So it's interviews with like hall of fame songwriters, hit music producers, um, hit music publishers, uh, take you into the demo studio. And so it's just like, it's, it's diving in. And so if, if this has been helpful to know what the pro knows, man, you can hear it from hall of famers and you can get that at songwritingpro.com slash preview. That's songwritingpro.com slash preview. Because it is, it's a little sneak preview into the minds of a bunch of pros and also a sneak preview into the songwriting pro community. So, uh, yeah, no charge, my gift. There you go, guys. All right, that brings us to the end of another Killer Climb episode. Make sure that you leave a rating and review, subscribe to the podcast, join the Climb community, tell a friend about it. This podcast exists because we want you to win, so keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. 